Hello class, today we'll be talking about chapter 1, which covers stress. Just a brief overview of the topics we'll be covering in this chapter. First, an introduction to mechanics of materials. Second, equilibrium of a deformable body. Third, we'll be covering the definition of stress. We'll be covering average normal stress and average shear stress. And then we're going to be covering allowable stress and finally design of simple connections. In mechanics of materials, it's really the study of the effects of stress and strain in the body due to external loads. Stress is the internal distribution of those external loads, and strain is the deformation of the body as a result of those loadings. An understanding of mechanics of materials really helps us design different parts when we're performing engineering analyses. By allowing us to determine when a material will fail due to the applied loads. So the first principle we're going to talk about in this class is the principle of static equilibrium. And this is really the content of the material you guys learn in statics. And basically it states that the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments on a body must be equal to zero. And then we have three primary loading conditions. We have external loads, we have support reactions, and we have internal resultant loads. The internal resultant loads are what we're going to calculate in order to be able to determine what the stress and strain in a body are. To determine the internal reaction forces inside of a body, we use the method of sections. The method of sections allows us to find the reactions on a, an idealized cut inside of a body, and then use the equations of static equilibrium to calculate what the internal forces are. We start with some body subject to some known external loads, then we define a section or plane at which we wish to define the internal resultant loads. The internal resultant loads inside this body are going to be distributed across the area of the cross section of the member. However, we don't know what the distribution of forces looks like yet. However, we can find a known reaction force, shown here as FR, and a reaction moment, such as MRO, acting about some central point of the cross sectional area O. Once the resultant force and moment are known, we can then divide those force and moments into component forces and moments acting relative to the plane that we define by our cross-sectional cut. These divisions develop into what we call the normal and shear force and the torsional and bending moments. Once we know the internal resultant loads as a function of the area, we can then use those to determine the stress inside of the member where the stress is divided into two primary components, the normal stress, or the intensity of force acting normal to the plane, and the shear stress, or the intensity of force acting tangent to a plane. It's important to note that we consider the normal stress to be positive in tension and negative in compression. Also, the subscripts for shear stress define first the plane of which the shear stress acts and then the direction in which the shear stress acts. And that it is also important to note that unless otherwise stated that most of the principles we're covering in this class are to be applied for homogeneous and isotropic materials. Homogeneous materials are materials that have the same property at all locations throughout their body and isotropic materials have the same properties in all directions. This is an accurate simplification of most engineering materials, especially for most metals, but is very inaccurate for composites and organic materials like carbon fibers and wood. The average normal stress in a body can be easily calculated by dividing the normal force by the cross-sectional area. This is a fairly good approximation for the force distribution inside a body when sufficiently away from the applied load and when the cross-sectional area is not changing. Similarly, the average shear stress can be calculated by dividing the shear force by the cross-sectional area of the plane of interest. It's important to note that the actual stress inside the body will distribute depending on the geometry of the cross-sectional area, and that this measure only calculates the average force and not necessarily the maximum force. To ensure the safety in the design of structural members, it is necessary to ensure that a member will not fail by choosing an allowable stress that is less than the failure stress. One way to specify this is by a factor of safety. This describes the ratio of the failure load relative to the allowable load specified by the design. We can use the material properties to determine the failure stress inside of a material, and we can also find an allowable stress in a design by calculating the failure stress and the factor of safety. We can then use the applied load or the expected applied load and the allowable stress to calculate the required cross-sectional area for a member to not fail. This can be applied for both the normal stress and the shear stress. Thank you for watching this review of Chapter 1.
In chapter 2, we will talk about straining materials.